Hi, I'm Rosie and I'm the art worker for Tiny Books Company and I'm going to be giving you a tiny tutorial on how to prepare your logo for hot foil printing. Here at Tiny Books Company, we offer hot foil printing onto a variety of our products. However, a lot of our customers don't actually realise that we use quite a traditional method, which is known as hot foil debossing. Now this involves having a magnesium plate or die with your logo or design etched onto it so that we can then stick it onto the machine that we use and with a combination of temperature and pressure we can then print your logo onto the surface of our boxes. Now in order for us to make these magnesium plates we need to have your logo in a vector format so a vector format is basically a graphic that is a continuous line made up of points and curves so that when you zoom in that line and points they all are smooth and not blurry whereas a raster graphic that's when they, it's made up of pixels and when you zoom in the image is just can become blurry which we are fortunately cannot use to make these hot plates. Now, a vector format can come in um, AI files, EPS, SVG, whereas raster graphics can come in JPEGs, PNGs. So we receive quite a combination of the both and we would just like to make it easier for you so that when we receive these files, we can get straight into making that hot plate. If you do have a raster graphic of your logo and design and you are wanting to turn it into a vector, then I'm gonna show you how you can do so on Illustrator. I've got a PNG here of our Tiny Box Company logo. And so basically, as you can see, it is a PNG because there is no background. So what I'm first going to do is, because it is currently a turquoise color, we are going to change it to a black color. So first of all, I'm gonna go up to edit, edit colors, and then we're going to do adjust the color balance. So now you come up with the adjust colors and I'm basically just going to turn all of these to minus 100%. And if you click on the little preview down here, you can see that it has now turned it into black. So basically, I am turning this into black so that we can image trace. And the best outcome for image trace is when your logo is black. So I am now going to take your image. And if you go over to the properties here on the right and image trace, now you can choose from the selection here, but I find that black and white logo just works the best and I tend to use this on a daily basis. So I'm just going to click that. Now, if you go onto the little um, panel here, so you can come up with the image trace panel and basically this will now allow you to alter the um, image trace result. So if we zoom in a little bit, now, if you move the threshold, this basically means that there's more or less black in the image. So I tend not to alter that too much just because at the moment it's looking not too bad. Um, however, as you can see down here on the company bit, it is just not looking quite as straight. So what I would then do is come up to the paths and just move that up a little bit. So this is basically adding in more points, more lines, so that, as you can see, it has now made it a little bit more of the corners. So we'll just maybe add that a little bit more, just so we can try and get the best resemblance of the original image. So I'll do that a little bit more. I tend to go to around 90, 94, 95%. So I think this is looking pretty good. I don't tend to mess around with the corners or the noise, but feel free to play around. Corners just means that obviously there's more corners or less. So what I'm going to do now is, as you can see, it has when you image trace, it gives you this white background and 
we do not need the white background. So there is an option down here on the image trace panel for you to ignore white. And that simply removes the background and you are only left with the black image. Now, once you're happy with how the quality of the image is looking, we will then expand it over here in the properties panel. And that will make our logo into a vector. And now you can see when you zoom in, it has given you these lines. If I click this, it has given you these lines and these anchor points. So that means that it has defined the logo. And now we are good to use this for a plate. Now Illustrator can be expensive and it isn't really ideal when you're a small business starting up and you just don't quite have the funds. So there are some alternatives. Um, first off, you can come to us. We have a in-house designer that can create a logo for you and provide the right files for you. So all the vector files and we can then use these files to make the play. There are also um, other programs such as Canva, which um, a lot of our customers use, um, which is free, but it tends to be in a raster graphic, so a PNG, um, a JPEG. So, um, however, if you do have the pro version, you can actually export as an SGV file, which is a vector. So then we can use that. I hope this video has been of some use to you and you've learned something new or you now know how to turn your logo into a vector and have it ready for full printing. So I look forward to having your logos come through and see your logo come out on our boxes.